Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Wars of Marcus Aurelius, designed by Robert Dulesky and published by Hollenspiel Games. In a game of Marcus Aurelius, we are fighting the Marcomannic Wars, which were some of the defining wars of Marcus Aurelius's career. In order to win the game, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to beat back each of these Germanic tribes, so the Marcomanni, the Quadi, and the Yaziges, all the way back to their homelands, and defeat them there. Once you do that, they are subdued, and if you can get all three tribes subdued at the same time, then you win the game. However, there are also plenty of ways to lose. One way to lose the game is for the Marcomanni to make it all the way down to Rome. If you have an invasion of Rome, then the game is definitely over, because well, that's not acceptable. Another way to lose is to have your Imperium drop all the way down to zero. Your Imperium is basically your power and authority within the Empire. And if your people start to lose faith in you, well, things might get a little bit dicey. The other way to lose the game is just to run out of time. Marcus Aurelius dies in 180 CE, and if he does not complete his life's military work by then, well, he ain't gonna complete it. So that's, that's the time limit that you have. The way most things are achieved in Wars of Marcus Aurelius is through card play. In a game, you're gonna have three seasons. So you'll have spring, and then summer and winter. And in the course of each season, you're gonna draw a different number of cards. In the spring, you get to draw five cards. In the summer, you get to draw three cards. In the winter, you only get to draw one. You have to discard all of your cards at the end of the year, unless you're storing one or two in the meditation spaces. So you have to deploy all of your cards well and wisely. Meanwhile, in every season, you're also going to be drawing and resolving three barbarian cards. Let's have a quick look at some of the cards from the game. All right, so of these five cards that we're just drawing, I randomly shuffled, I have no idea what's in here right now. Oh, these are all really exciting ones too. Okay, so in this case, some of the cards are just action cards, but we actually got some pretty juicy events in here. So what makes the cards in this game interesting is that you can play them in multiple ways. So you're going to use your cards to power every action you do. So some of the cards have really exciting events on them, like this one gives us a free win against the Yavagays. The Rain Miracle allows you to automatically win a battle that you're fighting and get some Imperium points. A Foreign Treaty allows you to end an off-map conflict. Those will happen. And this one allows you to either increase your IP or draw some more cards. Also exciting. So all the card titles are based on historical events too, which is kind of cool. But you can, when you play cards, you can either play them for the very exciting events that are on them. Some don't have events at all. They're just purely for actions or you spend them to do a number of things that you're going to have to spend them on in the game. If you want to do things in Wars of Marcus Aurelius, such as initiate a battle, move your forces around or move your leaders around, get some Imperium points, or build forts which help to fortify areas that you want to keep protected and you want to have better odds of winning battles in, you're going to have to spend cards for each of those things that you do. So when you have cards, you have crucial decisions to make. Do you take them for the exciting events printed on them, or do you spend them as actions because you just really need to get some actions done? And this game will force you to make choices that are hard in that particular respect because you're going to want to do everything and there's so many limits on what you can do. Except for on the very first turn, you're going to start with a barbarian turn most rounds and you're going to have to draw and resolve three barbarian cards. And they can be a number of different things. Sometimes it's just advancing one of the tribes that you're fighting against. So what will happen then is that you move your enemies forward and you'll put them in the surge track. When the search track hits three cards, you don't just advance the barbarians whose card you drew, but you advance the other two tribes as well. Sometimes the barbarian deck is going to reveal things to you like conflicts that are off map. So for example, in this one, we're having problems with the chatty and it is a Western conflict. So you put it in the Western empire and you have to divert troops and leaders over here and roll dice to deal with this conflict. And if you ignore it, you start to lose IP at a pretty fast rate. So you can't let it go. Other things that can happen are you can have cards where barbarians attack your forts. So if you have been trying to fortify various regions on the board, then they become in danger from the actions on barbarian cards. In general, there are plenty of surprises in there that I'll leave you to discover for yourself because that's part of the fun. The other thing that's pretty cool about the game is that as history progresses and you move through the years in the game, at one point you're eventually going to add all of these late war cards into your deck so that you actually get some fresh events and actions that you can take. Also hilarious is that several of the cards refer to actual historical events such as the Scandal Faustina. So at one point, it was believed that Marcus Aurelius had died out near the Danube and his wife began looking for someone new to have an affair with and set off a rebellion from there. So of course we're going to lose some authority back at Rome because I mean, if even your wife thinks you're dead. 
So overall, this game is a fun little balancing act because you're trying to figure out how to spend your cards, which tribe is the biggest threat to you, whether you need to be worrying about off-map conflicts, and also whether you need to be concerning yourself with like rearranging your legions, trying to figure out what to do things like get fleets out to make them easier to rearrange, and managing situations like a potential barbarian surge. So with that, I'll give you some final thoughts. I'm just going to say up front that I'm a big fan of the Wars of Marcus Aurelius. It is an excellent, light, solitaire war game, and I think my favorite thing about it is that it represents a fantastic melding of game mechanics and theme. I'm particularly impressed by the way it simulates the way the Marcomannic Wars must have been. Marcus Aurelius was fighting against multiple different Germanic tribes, and what's really fun about Wars of Marcus Aurelius is that the three tribes that you're dealing with constantly pop back up to bother you even if you think that you have subdued them. The game really isn't over until it's over, and having to constantly think through and plan how you're going to manage that area of the world is fascinating. I also like that the game doesn't just let you focus on the Marcomannic Wars. There are also conflicts in the eastern and western parts of the Empire to distract you, draw off your soldiers, and sort of make the game more realistic, because you can't, as the Roman Emperor, put all of your energy into one part of a vast empire where there are going to be problems all over the place. The theme also comes through so well in the cards, where you have event cards or cards that go in your history deck that are truly tied to actual historical events that Marcus Aurelius encountered in his life, to figures that really existed during that time period, such as Marcus Aurelius' wife or Alexander the Quack Prophet, and also event cards like the Rain Miracle that refer to actual events on the battlefield. For a Roman history enthusiast like me, it's really fun to see all of those callbacks and to let history play out in slightly different ways every time I pull out the game. Speaking of the cards, I also love that they're multi-use, so it is excruciating in a great way when you get this handful of amazing, like, juicy event cards, and you have to decide which ones you're going to give up to play for actions because you need to discard cards for battling or for building forts, and which ones you're going to play for the actual events that are printed on the card. That decision can sometimes be really tense, and I love games that make me make decisions about what I actually want to do with my cards. The other aspect of decision making in the game that I like quite a bit is you have to balance strategically between short term actions and long term ones. So do I want to worry about my Imperium now? Do I want to fight a battle now? Or do I want to put some forts out, which doesn't seem as exciting, but it's going to really come in handy in a future battle. Overall, Wars of Marcus Aurelius is a game where you have really good decisions to make that are always interesting, that are always compelling, and that keep you engrossed in the game from the moment you put it on the table and start playing until you pack it up. I also appreciate the game's length. I think that it has excellent ease of setup. It's easy to pull the game out and get it ready to go. And I also think that it doesn't wear its welcome. The game can end in as little as 30 minutes if it's not going well, and it typically doesn't go any longer than maybe a little over an hour for me. The box says 90 minutes. And I think that's a good length for a solo game that you want to play when you want to you know, get something meaty to the table, but you don't want to commit your whole night. And Wars of Marcus Aurelius is a regular in my solo rotation because of that length. I do have a couple of quibbles with the game. Uh, my main one is that occasionally you get turns that aren't particularly exciting, either because you drew a bunch of cards that you can't do that much with, or because the Germanic tribes didn't do anything particularly interesting with their cards. So you can have a couple of turns that seem a little bit less exciting than others. However, because you spend cards for both actions and events, you know, there's always something to do and always something to think about. The only other quibble I have is that now that I've played the game so often, I definitely have one basic strategy that I pursue every time, which is to knock out one of the tribes and subdue them as quickly as possible, and then turn my attention to the other two, just because a war on three fronts is exhausting, and you want to be able to concentrate your forces in more beneficial ways. However, the fact is that even though that's always my strategy, it doesn't always work, which means the gameplay is always going to have some excitement and some surprises for me. Overall, I think that Wars of Marcus Aurelius is a fantastic game. I think it's good mechanically. I think it's great thematically. And it's a game that I enjoy, even though I've had it in my collection now for close to a year. I think it does a lot that even though I'm always playing new games, this is one that I still pull back out, one that I still think about, and one that I still spend time on. So for that, I'm giving Wars of Marcus Aurelius a 9 out of 10 and a Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. Happy gaming! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king.
Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.